How cool is it to be here at DogCon 2, <laughs> celebrating 10 years of Raw Dog Screaming Press, launching with this event this weekend. And uh, I know you all just applauded, but I would like to uh, actually have you all applaud Jennifer Barnes and John Edward Lawson for what they've accomplished over the past day. Thank you guys. Uh, I'm proud to be a part of the crew for so many years. Uh, usually at a fiction or a poetry reading, people plug their latest work. And I'm just going to read to you random things for the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, but I do have a book up here called Play Dead, which is a paperback re-release of, of my second novel, which these guys took a risk on, and it's one of the sickest novels ever published. So. <laughs> You're lucky I'm not reading from it tonight. Uh, also, up there on that cookie sheet is something I'm associated with, with which is the uh, Refrigerator of the Dance. Wow. <laughs> I guess it's notorious as a uh, refrigerator poetry magnet set made of uh, strange words that are lifted from another book that Raw Dog Screaming Press put out called The Gordlet's Omnibus. And if you, uh, I think they have some for sale, though they're like 12 bucks or something like that. Um, if you'd like one to play with or to give to your kids for Christmas. Or something. Yeah, the magazines are only 10. 10 bucks. Woo! Discount. <laughs> <laughs> if you pick one up, uh, you don't have to be a poet, but everybody can write poems like this one called Zombie Milk. <laughs> Souls are memory embalmed in brain. It spurts wet wonder when you chew it. And despair tastes lively as you swallow. <laughs> All poetry magnets. <laughs> Alright, uh, this po am I being too loud? <laughs> Reverb. Okay. Uh, this is a poem I wrote inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's uh, The Black Cat, sort of. And I wrote this as part of uh, the dare that Stephanie Wojtovich and I put together. Um, I, I don't have my other one, which was about something sick. This, is, this one's just called The Stuffed Black Cat. Not sick at all. <laughs> Home after school. My daughter greets me in what has become a ritual. With a dismissive nod, she passes me by and runs up the stairs to retrieve her favorite stuffed animal from her bedroom. A stupidly wide-faced and impossible black cat with woolen whiskers and felt triangle ears. It was the Hello Kitty doll I got her for Christmas last year. A cheap gimmick to help her cope a few months following her mother's funeral. But she had left it in the closet, untouched, like some unworn shoe she had simply outgrown way too fast, or dropped behind in her mad dash away from the memories of her mother. I chalked it up to her new until Halloween, that is, when something possessed her to dye it black, an ugly stain, modeled in patterns like black mold, and it disturbs me every time she clutches it, not only because it's as ashen as an infantile corpse, but also because its awkwardly placed bow remains blood red, canted on its temple like some godforsaken brain damage bandage on some terrible Japanese mutant zombie. I am happy she has started playing with dolls again, even if it means ignoring me in the process. Her cuddles and coos are the only thing resembling love I've seen her express in too long a time. She sometimes pets it like it's alive. I think I even saw her licking it clean once. I say nothing, even at night when I peek inside her room and watch her bury it between her mattress and box spring, talking herself quietly to sleep, whispering in the darkness, Goodbye, kitty. Goodbye. <laughs> Her words haunt me as I wrestle with my pillow, trying to sleep. Goodbye, kitty. Goodbye. They were the same words I said when I suffocated Catherine, her mother. <laughs> Inspired by the black cat in some strange way. Uh, okay, this is my Scanners-inspired poem. Uh, when Stephanie and, I, Stephanie and Julie challenged each other to come up with a new poem for this event uh, based on scanners, we also said maybe The Exorcist, too. So I put them both together into a long poem that might not make any sense called <laughs> Onward Christian Scanners. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm hearing this for the first time myself, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> Imagine if Cronenberg had written and directed The Exorcist. 
In it, Father Damien Karras is not a psychiatrist, but a psychic, capable, capable of reading thoughts and moving objects in his mind. This superpower, he believes, is the power of Christ, and it compels him to study the art of exorcism under Father Merrin, who trains him to be a scanner, a psych soldier in the Christian army, capable of not only sensing a sinner's guilt and truly knowing the nature of their crimes, but also able to circumvent confession altogether and directly absolve them, should they genuinely regret them and seek purity. This, at first, is what exorcism means for Karras. But then he meets Reagan, body scraped and raped from the inside out, possessed by the demon Pazuzu, who reflects his scanning powers back at him. She seems to be able to read his mind as well, calling to him in the voice of mother, shaming him for abandoning him in the nursing home. He shakes with rage, and Reagan cackles quietly, knowing he wishes to beat her to bruises with his boxer's fists. And her head pivots impossibly backward on the child's shoulders, puking green soup right into his face. He blinks and screams, and as Reagan's head spins around, it slowly begins to swell with boils and puff up like a blowfish, stretching open its scars till it explodes in a burst of green gore that splashes across the bedroom, getting into his eyes again, now demon eyes, while Reagan's bloody exposed spinal cord is all that remains above her shoulders, spinning, still spinning, like a forgotten whisk in some sick cotton candy machine as Damien races for the window. Thank you for your inspiration, Stephanie Whitehead. <laughs> <laughs>